Hello and welcome to the 85th video in this series programming Chess Engine in C. So in this video we're going to implement the transition table, uh, sorry, transposition table. Um, I already did two videos on this, 85 and 86, and deleted them because to be honest they were terrible and it was becoming a bit rushed. And I decided to do the complete implementation because there are quite a few changes and then talk through these changes in the code which is available for download. So a transposition table is also known as a hash table and for now on I'm going to call it a hash table. And what is it? Well, you remember in uh, the 84, video 84 and previous code, we were storing a PV move in our PV table at the end of search and the end of queue search. And we would probe our PV table to try and get a good move for improving our move ordering. Well, the transposition table is exactly the same thing. It just stores more information, stores at different places in the search and probes a little bit earlier. If I go into the code I've changed here, PV entry is now hash entry, and we're going to store a flag, a score, and a depth. And we'll be storing an alpha, a beta, or an exact flag. And where we do this storing is actually inside the search. I'm inside alpha, beta here, and I'm at the area now where we look for cutoffs. I've changed the code slightly, by the way, now to set a best score at minus infinite before we start the move loop here. And it's simply so that even if we don't beat alpha, I'm still going to store the best move we found in the position to try and improve move ordering a little bit more. And what we do is, say we beat beta, we then store, no longer store PV move, we store a hash entry where we store the move, but we also store beta, a flag beta, and critically the current depth, so the depth we search to in this position. If we don't beat beta, but we have changed alpha, then we store with the exact flag because we have an exact score for this position because we've improved alpha. We store that score in the move and the depth. Otherwise, we just store alpha and the alpha flag and the move. And what you can do with this information, you can actually then at the start of alpha beta, we used to, remember, have probe PV move here. Well, now it's moved and we're now going to probe a hash entry where we still get our PV move, but we also get some other information, score critically. And if we return true from this function, then we'll just return the score. We won't bother searching, irrespective of our depth, any more of the doing null move or searching any moves in this position. We'll just return this score as a score for the position. So the critical part of all this, of course, then is the probing. On Bruce Morland's site, there's a much better Suedo code version that's simpler to read to explain how this probing works. So as with the PV move, if we get a key match between our entry and our current key, and the depth of the entry, and this is the critical part, is greater than or equal to the depth we are searching at now. That means the information stored is at least as accurate as we need. If the depth is less, it won't be, so there's no point in using the information. Then, if the flag was an exact flag, then we have an exact score for this position at a depth greater than or equal to the current search depth, so we can just return the score, or in the case of the vice code, we'll be returning true. If the flag was alpha, which means we didn't beat alpha, so we stored alpha in the hash entry, and in the hash entry the alpha that was stored is less than or equal to the current alpha, then we aren't going to beat this alpha eta either because we didn't beat the stored alpha, so we can just return alpha. And the same goes for the beta. If we stored a beta flag and therefore stored a beta from that search, if that search is beta, which was bettered, is, is greater than or equal to the current search's beta, then we're guaranteed to beat this beta as well, so we can return beta straight away. And as you can see, that this allows a lot of occasions where positions can simply be cut off and ignored, and the results can be quite spectacular, especially with checkmates and things like that, which I'm going to show shortly in Arena. If we look at this in the code, if I go into PV table, the first thing I've done is I've increased the size here to 16 megabytes. It's not very much, but it's a little bit. And we'll do in a later video changing of the this uh, the way the the functions work to actually allow this to be set by the user through the GUI, which is why we made this initialization in this manner here with memory allocation, because we'll send as an argument into here the number of megabytes rather than setting it fixed here. But that'll come in a later video. For now, the clear hash table is no longer clear PV table; it's clear hash table, and it clears all of the entries. And in the search, we're no longer in the clear for search here. 
clearing out our hash entries. We want to keep our hash table stuff for later searches. That's the whole point. We're just resetting some of the statistics that I've got inside the hash table structure to record to put out to the console to check everything's working okay. So I'll go down to our store hash entry. So we store our flag, our depth, our score, our move. And this works exactly the same as storing a PV move. The other thing I've done here is I've said if the position key in the table is zero, it means we're writing into a brand new entry because I like to keep track of how many brand new entries we write, see how full the table is. Otherwise, we're overwriting. And we're not overwrite, we're just overwriting here. Every time we store, we overwrite. Um, you can do things like say, if the entry is from a previous search, so you would make a date key or something, then overwrite. If it's from a current search, don't, or you could only overwrite with deeper entries and things like this. But the moment we're just blindly overwriting and always storing. Information is stored here, move, key, the flag, the score, and the depth. And the only slightly confusing thing can be this here is where we adjust the mate score. If you imagine that we'd had a minus, uh, when we were storing a mate at the end of alpha beta, we'd had a, a minus infinite plus, say, four, the play was four, so we had minus two, nine, 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 six. Well, obviously, it, d it depends on the, co we could. Uh, take an entry of the hash table when we're actually searching much much shallower in the tree, but we can or deeper in the tree, but we can still use the entry. So we want to reset this mate score back to basically infinite. So that's what we do here, and then store the score. And then we come to probing the hash entry, and we get our index as normal. I've got a stack of asserts in here, and then if the keys match, just as for pro PV move, then we have our PV move, and that's what we set here. So irrespective of the depth, we have our PV move. And now we say that if the depth in the hash table, just as in the Suedo code here, is better or equal to than our search depth, we have a hash hit, a couple of a search. We get the score out first and adjust that according to the play, if it's a mate score, to adjust it back, essentially. So the opposite of what we did when we were storing. And now I've just realized I need to take this line out here. And now we switch and look at the flags that we have. And exactly the same as the Suedo code, depending on the alpha, beta, exact flag, and whether score is less than or equal to alpha, greater than or equal to beta, we return true, setting score to alpha or beta, otherwise we just return true because we have an exact score. If this doesn't happen, then we drop to the bottom here and return false. And this allows us then back in the search, all the way up here where we probed a hash entry to return the score and get a hash cutoff. Okay, so how does that how does that affect the engine? Well, if I make this position here new and just restart Vice, and now hit Analyze, you can see that Vice finds Rook F1, which is the correct move, has 3.1 million positions of depth eight. If I now hit Analyze again, it's taken eight positions to get to depth eight. Has the full PV in there and has the score in there as well. And the reason is it's because it's getting this information from the hash table. And a more spectacular version of this is this position here. Well, if we analyze now, the answer to this position is queen f1. And if I play queen f1, because it wasn't finding it in that position, it thinks it's a draw. But it should find eventually that this position is actually a mate. And in fact, I think that's what's happening here with this long pause for depth 8. And you remember in the previous search, before I moved the queen to f1, it had no idea whatsoever. It was even might be a draw. It was convinced that it was actually, there you go, it's found a mate. Now if I move the queen back and let it search, it knows instantly the position is mate, because it's using the information from the hash table. If I restart vice, hash table cleared, and analyze from this position, it has no idea that position is mate. And now if I play the queen, even by depth 8 still, if I now play the queen to f1, and let it analyze, it'll now find, because we're one move further on, it'll find the mate. If I then go back to our original position where we restarted, just to show you, it'll find the mate instantly, because it has the information inside the hash table. So I'll just let it find the mate, which will then be stored in the hash table, there, and now search from this original position, here you can say, see depth 2, it's already realizes the position is mate. So there you can see the power and usefulness of a hash table, and where it becomes useful, particularly is if you implement pondering in your engine, which is where you think on the opponent's time, with the opponent makes the move you were expecting, 
then often you get a massive uh, advantage and head start into your own search and therefore get a lot deeper. So the code's available for download. Uh, and like I said, I didn't want to copy and paste all and make these adjustments in a video because I kept getting confused. Uh, it's better to have done it all and show you what's happened. I'll let Vice now run against TSCP, probably in a 60 game match, and see what kind of strength differences there are. They should be extremely big. And yes, and then I might well release Vice's version 1.0. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.